Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will introduce you to the Digital Signature Algorithm, DSA. It is a NIST standard. Essentially, it is built on top of Elgamal and Schnorr digital signature schemes that we have discussed. It also uses the discrete logarithms as the underlying hardness problem to generate digital signatures. So there are multiple steps here in the digital signature algorithm. One is global parameters generation. Usually NIST, for example, will generate the global parameters, you know, the cyclic group, the group generator, those numbers are specified by NIST. So we don't have to generate ourselves, but if we want, we can. Um, we need to be careful about the cyclic group properties, right? To make sure the, digit, the discrete logarithm problem is hard in that group that we are working with. That's the prerequisite always. So the cyclic group G has to be a prime order cyclic group. For example, it could be Z star P where P is a safe prime like two times Q plus one. Then we know the, the cyclic group G has a prime order Q. If we select G to be a group generator, which generates a group of order Q, okay? So I talked about cyclic groups in the past. So I request you to watch those prerequisite videos. Once we have the global parameters, each user would have to generate their own public private key pairs. That's the key generation part. So I'm now moving to the key generation part, uh, which is over here. The first step in key generation is to select a number X, right? Um, which is a private value, uh, which should run between one through Q minus one. It's an integer, of course, we are only working with integers. So this is, this is the part I'm talking about now. And uh, then we apply g power x mod p to get a y. So that element y becomes public, x is private. A discrete logarithm problem is that given y, given g and p, it's difficult to find x. That's the hardness problem we are going to make use of in the digital signature. All right. The reason why x should not be q is that g power q will be one because g is a group generator of order q. So g power q will be one. As usual, as in the past, the digital signature is going to give us two things. One is the message, another is the pair R comma S. Okay, so how do we generate R and S? So we first generate a random K. By the way, this X is also randomly chosen here. So we randomly choose a K from the set one through Q minus one, it's an integer. And then we compute G power K mod P and that becomes a number R, okay? And then we generate something called S, which is a signature you can imagine is it is using a hash function, like a cryptographic hash function, for example, SHA-3 or SHA-2, which is approved, okay? And uh, we hash the message, we mix the private key here, right? X is the private key. The signer will use the private key, of course, and R is the other number that I just generated, and multiply it with K inverse, okay? And put it into mod Q, so you have R comma S um, generated from the signature. Okay, there is one small mistake. I have to complete R also to be in mod Q. Okay, so both R and the S are elements between zero through Q minus. Okay, so now we are done with the digital signature. We sign the message using M as the input and we generated R and S. Okay, you remember uh, K is randomly chosen every time you want to sign. So you get a different R, therefore we get a different signature. Okay, the hash function has to be has to behave like a random function uh, for, for better security. Like SHA-2, SHA-3 is not quite random oracle, but that's what we instantiate in practice. Okay, all right, now we are going to the verification part, which is taking the input the M, R, and S. First step is compute S inverse, which exists because Q is prime. And uh, also S is an element in mod Q, so G, from, from zero through Q minus one. We make an assumption that R and S are non-zero throughout this. It's a very negligible chance that will happen, so I'm not writing that. Uh, if it is zero, you won't be able to find S inverse, of course. So uh, S inverse mod Q is W, and then we uh, take the message M that is coming, we apply the hash function, we multiply it with the W, which gives us U1, and then we take R and multiply it with W, we get uh, U2, and uh, we compute G power U1, Y power U2, Y is the public key. Okay, so who is verifying? Verifying anyone who wants to check whether the message comes from the party who owns the private key can verify using the other party's public key. Okay, so this, the sender or the signer, this is the signer, right? Signer's private key is built inside the signature. Anyone can verify using the signer's public key. As you can see, signer's public key is put into the model. Okay, so verification is successful if V is equal to R. Okay, you can prove yourself why 
uh, B has to be equal to R. Yeah, if there's no tampering along the way, you can check whether B is equal to R. Um, if you assume somebody follows this procedure, we can prove that, okay. So essentially that's it, you know, uh, we are taking a cyclic group of prime order Q. It need not be safe prime like P equal to two Q plus one. The NIST standard allows actually P equal to some J times Q plus one is perfectly fine. Um, the only thing is that the size of the Q must be at least um, 128 bit security. Okay, that's the only prerequisite you would like to have. Okay, so uh, although in my demo, I'm going to use P equal to two Q plus one, you could actually uh, in, instead of two, you could replace it by some large J. That means the Q will be small. That's perfectly fine. Um, as long as the Q is not too small, like less than 128 bit security strength. Okay, which means you want to have Q to be at least 256 usually. Okay, all right, um, 256 bit uh, number there. The smaller Q will help you because you can expedite the uh, computation, right? Because you're going to do mod Q, which means the, the the power k, you, you see here this k is exponent. So we'll have much faster r and s, okay? That's that's the benefit of working with a smaller q. Anyway, that's low level implementation details. What is the bigger picture here? The bigger picture is that um, anyone can sign with their private key and anyone can verify using the corresponding public key. Okay, that is the beauty here. And it's assuming a couple of things, the discrete logarithm problem given why it's difficult to find X. Okay, that's the first problem. Another problem is the similarly on during the digital signature, we are also generating R. Given R, it's difficult to find K. K is kind of private and unique uh, for each signature. If K repeats, you can easily um, find X. All you have to do is solve a two system of equations with two unknown variables, then you can immediately find X. That happened in Sony uh, workstations for hacked. Uh, there was some implementation bug the same key K was used to sign multiple messages. So we could easily find the, the secret X. Okay, this is the private key, which is very bad. All right, that's basically it. And I will quickly show you the demo of my Python code. Yeah, it's a proof of concept code, okay. So I have this hash function. I'm using SHA-256, which takes my message M as a string and applies the straw function, SHA function and uh, reduce it to mod Q, okay? That, that's a high H of M that I talked about on my whiteboard. So here I'm generating my group parameters. I'm using safe prime P equal to two Q plus one. Therefore I know G equal to four is a generator of a cyclic group of order Q. And then I generate my private key and public key here, okay? So signature works as follows. With a lot of parameters, I could have made them global variables uh, or put some object structure, but anyway, I randomly generate a K as I talked about on the whiteboard g power k mod q after doing mod p and then uh, compute k inverse hash of message plus six times r mod q that will give us r and s okay it's just implementation of the algorithm i talked about on the whiteboard the verification phase i compute w u1 u2 and check whether a b is equal to r this is the, the main kind of the main function i wanted to show to you first step is for bob to generate the public and private key bob signs as a message using his, uh, the signature method, okay? As you can see, signature requires private key. And now like Alice can verify the signature is correct by taking all the public data, P, Q, G, M, R, S, Y. They're all public data, okay? That's basically it. Thank you very much for your attention.